The Austro-Hungarian Empire existed in its final form between 867 and 918. Although we could argue its actual existence dates back to around 1804 and even having its origins in the Holy Roman Empire or the ancient kingdoms of Austria and Hungary. But between 1867 and 1918, this is how it existed. One of the greatest empires, at least in size, that Europe has ever seen. A union of two kingdoms, Austria and Hungary, which together ruled an extensive part of the continent. Today, its territory is a part of Austria, Hungary, Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Romania, Poland, Czechia, Slovakia, and Ukraine. 12 countries, although only seven have their territory entirely inside the limits of the former empire. The territory of the empire also varied from time to time, so there is a chance I'm missing one or two countries that at one point or another had their current territory partially occupied by the Habsburgs. It was one of Europe's great powers of the 19th and early 20th century. But then, just like that, it completely fell apart. After the Central Powers were defeated in World War I, a sequence of events unfolded that led to the dissolution of the Empire. It wasn't the defeat in the war alone that caused their demise. They had faced problems for a long, long time in attempting to maintain so many different nations united within a single empire, and especially under the rule of the Austrians and Hungarians. In fact, we could argue that World War I began because of these same issues, with the assassination of the Austro-Hungarian prince in Sarajevo by a Serbian national. So I think saying that the empire would have survived simply if World War I didn't happen, or if the Central Powers had won the war or reached a white peace, is wrong. Obviously, we can go through these hypothetic scenarios of it surviving through reform into a United States of Greater Austria, an idea even floated around back then, but I want to do something different, although perhaps equally or even more unrealistic. What if the Austro-Hungarian Empire reunited today? In terms of size, the restored empire would take the entire territory of many currently independent nations plus parts of four other ones, including half of Romania, a smaller but significant part of Serbia, as well as one of Poland and Ukraine. When it existed, Austria-Hungary was geographically the second largest country in Europe after the Russian Empire, having a total size of 621.5 thousand square kilometers. And today, it would once again be the second largest in all of Europe, only behind Russia. Worldwide, it would rank as the 45th largest country in the world. There is also the issue of where the capital would be. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was a dual monarchy, so it technically had two capitals, in Vienna and in Budapest. They could do this again or they could choose one of the other country's capitals as the chosen imperial seat of power. Zagreb, Sarajevo, Prague, Bratislava, or Ljubljana, or they could create a new capital from scratch, an imperial capital of Danubia or something since the Danube River passes through the region. And who would now live within this extensive imperial territory? It's difficult to determine exactly how many people would be a part of the country for two reasons. One, only seven of the 12 countries are entirely inside the empire's borders, so the other ones are difficult to account for because I don't know how many people live in those specific territories. And and two, even if we had those regional numbers, these are parts of countries which would remain independent outside the new empire, so their populations might not agree to joining and migrate back into the rest of Italy, Poland, Serbia, Romania, etc. So let's just account for the full seven. This would give the empire a minimum of 44 million people, making it the eighth most populated country in Europe if we count Russia and Turkey as being part of the European list. If not, it would be number six ahead of Ukraine and just behind Spain. If we then account for the parts of Serbia, Romania, Ukraine, and Poland, as well as Italy, which according to these maps have high population density in the former imperial areas, I think we'd see the total population numbers of this new empire rise up to probably around 65 million at least, allowing it to surpass Italy as the fourth or sixth most populated country in Europe and the 23rd worldwide. But what about the national identity of all these people? If it was taking the territory of all these countries, then an equivalent number of nationalities would exist inside the new empire. In this map of 1910, we can see how, back then, ethnicities were distributed along the empire. For some reason, they grouped up Croats, Serbs, and Bosnians into one, but it's interesting to see how some communities were mixed 
with the others, especially Germans here in red, which could be found spread throughout other places. And what about the population's religion? This chart shows us the amount of people in each country that follow a specific religion. We can see that the vast majority of Europe, according to this 2010 data, is either Catholic or non-religious. And within the countries of the empire, we see that the only difference seems to be a small amount of Muslims, which are only a large percentage of Bosnia's population. But this chart doesn't differentiate between Roman Catholic or Orthodox. So let's go to this other map that does differentiate those and also shows us this data per region. It's always hard to know if these are accurate, so keep critical thinking in mind when looking at information like this. According to this map, the empire would be religiously divided in two main groups, Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox Catholics, with small minority groups, sometimes more or less significant, of Muslims and also apparently of Protestants over here in the blue. This could present some issues to stability within the new empire, although with states being entirely or almost entirely secular these days, as they should be, this might not be as relevant as it once was. The importance granted to religion also varies a lot, according to this poll from 2009 at least. I always doubt these a little because in importance granted to religion is very subjective. The darker the blue, the more importance each country gives to religion, but what defines importance and in what way does that affect the country's functioning or the day-to-day -day of its people? In the empire's territory, we can see a clear difference between member countries though. Czechia seems to be the country which gives the least importance to religion, followed by Hungary, Slovakia, Slovenia, then Serbia and Austria, while Croatia, Bosnia and Romania especially give a lot of importance to it according to this. But I feel like religious differences are more relevant than these of just subjective importance because the first might mean significant cultural differences, while these not so much. Differences within the new empire would also be present in terms of languages. I found this really cool map of Europe's languages and as we can see, the territory of the empire is immensely divided between various languages. While most European countries have a uniform language use, sometimes with small regional differences, but within the same language groups at least, the new Austro-Hungary would not be like this. Many of the member countries in the red slash brown would be within the Slavic group, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, etc., but they differ between them. Poles, Czechs, and Slovaks are West Slavic, Ukrainians are East Slavic, Slovenians, Croatians, Bosnians, and Serbians are South Slavic, and on top of that, they all have differences between them. Additionally, Austrians speak their own type of German, Italians and Romanians, both speak a Romance language but very different from one another and Hungarians speak a Uralic language, which we can see is still spoken a lot in the territories lost by Hungary after World War II, a significant territorial loss in benefit of its neighbors. And which flag would represent the empire today? The Austro-Hungarian flag was first the Habsburg horizontal bicolor of black and gold, with that then becoming Austria's flag, while Hungary used its own. Croatia Slavonia also eventually got its own flag within the empire that looked like this, but the main civil ensign used to represent all of the empire between 869 and 1918 was this one, a horizontal tricolor, red, white and red slash green on the bottom, with the Austrian and Hungarian coats of arms side by side. If the new empire wanted to keep this trend, they would likely have to include the colors and coats of arms of all member countries, as I doubt the others would once again agree to be represented by only two of the states. So a new flag would likely have to be created from scratch in order to represent it. The main colors they use now seem to be blue, red, white and hints of green and gold, so it would make sense that these would be the ones chosen. It's difficult to choose a single coat of arms or to represent all of them unless you made one of those huge composed ones, so maybe they could go back to a symbol of what was arguably the origin of the empire, the Holy Roman Empire Eagle, maintaining the divided tricolor template but adding yellow for the people of Bosnia, Romania and Ukraine, as well as blue for all the Slavic people and in a thin stripe in representation of the importance the new river that passes through the region. And who would rule all of these varied people throughout the vast territory represented by a potential new flag? If the point was to truly restore the empire, then an emperor would have to be chosen, perhaps searching the dynasty of the last Habsburgs to rule it. But I think the best solution would always be democracy, and even if the position of emperor were to exist, it should be only as a ceremonial and diplomatic head of state role 
without any real power. The power must belong to the people and its elected representatives. And so I think a federal type option would be the best. Like I mentioned, even before its dissolution, the empire faced many internal problems. And so in 1906, a proposal was put forth to reform the way that it worked. The idea was to federalize Austria-Hungary. It was conceived by a group of scholars surrounding Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, but ended up never being implemented. They wanted to create 15 states, the one seen here on this map, with a few autonomous enclaves depicted in the green. Now, while the borders would have to be changed to match the current existing countries, this could be an idea as to how the new imperial government would work. A central parliament with representatives of each state or country, as well as a central government which it elected. And then each state, corresponding to each current country, would have its local parliament and local government under the same logic. This would allow for more independence and autonomy of each nationality and better acceptance of this potential union, which could bring some benefits. Germany itself exists as a federalized country today, and while the circumstances are very different, it seems to work well for them. The membership of the new empire to the European Union is also an important point. All countries that exist in the territory of the old Austro-Hungarian Empire are members of the EU with the exception of Serbia, Bosnia, and Ukraine. It becoming a part of the EU would, in my view, make sense, but they would probably have to restart the entire process from scratch as a new country. One of the benefits of union would be a common economy. Common markets have proven to be very beneficial, the biggest example being that of the EU. Now, I don't know how much sense it would make for a common market to exist within another, but this is an impossible hypothetical, so let's just go with it. Economically, this new empire would have a total of at least 44 million consumers. Their GDP would also be be incredibly large. Again, only taking into account the seven full countries, they would have a joint GDP of 1,198 billion US dollars, or 1.19 trillion, the seventh biggest economy in Europe behind Spain and ahead of the Netherlands. Internationally, they would rank as the 15th biggest economy behind Australia and Brazil, but ahead of Indonesia. Or Mexico. If we then account for the parts of Serbia, Romania, Ukraine, Poland, and Italy, this number would likely increase a lot, especially with Romania and Poland's territories contributions, making it even more of a major world economy, for sure making it into the G20 group, for instance. If they join the EU, they could then use the euro as their currency, just like Austria, Slovakia, and Slovenia do now. But if they didn't join the eurozone or the EU at all, they would have to come up with their own common currency, perhaps recovering the historical Austro-Hungarian Chrome. And finally, how would they fare in military terms? Aside from Bosnia, Serbia, and Austria, they are all current members of NATO. Austria has a policy of full neutrality, so this might be difficult to get around, but I imagine that in this case, the new empire would become a member of NATO as well. In terms of the number of active military, they would have around 118,000 active members, ahead of Poland, but behind Spain, and having the 44th largest active military force in the world. Here we can assume that the other territories of Italy, Ukraine, Poland, and Romania would not account for military numbers, given that they would just continue representing and defending their still independent countries. So that would be the scenario if this very unlikely or even totally impossible possibility took place. How these now independent countries could reunite directly or indirectly under a single state or through a federal solution. How they would instantly become one of the largest, strongest, and most powerful countries in Europe and the world. But then again, not only is there zero reason for this to happen, and while it would be cool to see an ancient empire returning from an outside perspective, I doubt there's any desire for it to happen from the people who live in these countries. The Austro-Hungarian Empire didn't allow for each of these nationalities to have their due self-governance, and to return to something like that would be unacceptable. Perhaps a federation with shared power could work, but I don't know if it would be at all better than the current state self-sovereignty they have, especially because most of the benefits can probably be matched or even surpassed by belonging to the European Union as many of them do now. Not to mention the fact that even if a large amount of these people wanted this to happen, many of them could still be entirely opposed to it, and the instability that characterized the empire back then could return as well, and we all know how that worked out. So let's hope history wouldn't repeat itself. Would you like to see this happen? If yes, why? And if not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.